Welcome to Dysfunctional Adults, the comedy podcast in which we discuss weird news, pop culture, and being middle-aged dads. Yeah. We are bitter, cynical Gen Xers saddled with crippling debt and depressingly past our primes. But that's what makes this podcast so much fun. Oh, you guys, what a special episode today is. <laughs> yes. It's leap day. It, it is. Oh, that it is. only happens once every four years. So oh. it's an every four year special episode. Oh, <laughs> the what would that be called? I'm excited. <laughs> what would that be it's called? A, like, not semi annual. You know, what, what would that be? John, you're smart oh. that way. Would it be? <laughs> Once, like, once every four years. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the terminology for that. The Olympics. <laughs> Pre- presiden- election, presidential presidential election elections. Year? Yeah. <laughs> it's right, always well. easy. To, it's always easy to remember because leap year, presidential elections, and the Olympics always happen. Not just every four years, but the same four years. So you, you always remember it's all four of them or all three of them in one year. Hmm. Yeah, because the Olympics are boring. <laughs> just pissed wow. off an entire segment of our fan base right there <laughs> on that note i'm with my you. name is, is jason boring. hi jason. Phelps just like dick takes off his headphones like you guys are dicks i'm not listening to you guys anymore <laughs> you take simone off? biles just oh. taking this off all together stops following us <laughs> they, they totally were fans before that oh, oh absolutely. yeah that's why you can't see them in the you know the like feed yeah isn't that why uh, I offended them? What's her name retired so she could listen to uh, dysfunctional adults more full time rather than focusing on Olympics? That wasn't the official reason, but I know that's what the reason was. Yeah, yeah, yeah makes sense. So, but... Well, I have to say, I have missed you guys this week. Yeah, yeah, no reason. Miss... Oh, I just wish we could embrace and like do that thing where it's like, oh, this is comfortable, but then like. One of us moves into the other one a little too much, and then so they take that as a sign. They start moving in a little bit too. And like, <laughs> they're like our lips brush a little, and it's like, oh, is this right? Is this wrong? I don't know. I don't know. It just feels good. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> you reminded me of something I, I want to talk about really quickly. Um, Sweet. Something but, you uh, and I just found out what it meant a couple days ago, Jason. Not that. Not that. Because that's where so, that that's that's where that hug with with Zach would lead eventually. Oh no! Do you want to say e, what that is or no? No, no, no. Because the E doesn't cover that. The explicit E on our podcast. That's like E plus plus, and we didn't don't want to say we'd there. explain exactly what it means for people who don't know. Yeah, I, I you know, no. you take a ship and you <laughs> sail that ship into the play into the dock, like, like when you pull up to like a if you're port. docking a ship. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's well, I'm, I'm still saying, having like, nightmares. Anyway, if, if you don't know what that means, don't look it up. Jason and I did, and I, I regret it, and I'm sure he does as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't regret mentioning it and and <laughs> making you guys curious to look it up. I don't and I don't sending all those graphic pictures all. of it. Well, you guys had to know like there are different versions. <laughs> different ways we do it. We needed a full briefing on on this this practice. But but no, I wanted to uh, kind of address a, a funny sensitive topic. So, uh, I you know I've struggled with my self esteem over the past and. When you're dreaming, you know, that's one area where you can do like anything, right? You can be Superman, you can, you know, be like handsome. Well, my lack of self <laughs> self esteem extends to my dreams, and I'll tell you how. So you're all depressed uh, even in your dreams? No, no, but I'm a loser. So uh <laughs> I had uh once in a while I'll have a you know a sex dream, right? So oh, yeah. uh we all do, but um Mine are, are lame because the one I had last night is uh, shot down even in your, in your sex fantasies. No, not quite. So the dream began. <laughs> I was in this weird building and I had to poop and um, I was looking for, <laughs> I was looking for a toilet. Right. And uh, all the toilets I could find were like in open spaces. Like there was no privacy. <laughs> like so, in the middle of a room. There's just a toilet. Yeah. 
basically and there's like so there was, going on all around there was this one bathroom that was private and i was someone was in it and i was waiting for them to get out because I, I had to i had to use it and uh anyway as i'm circling this this building like going through the halls and stuff there's this super hot girl and uh you know she's she's uh ready for for adult fun and uh i could not join her because i had to go find the toilet <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's a relatable problem and then i woke up and i really had to use the bathroom and uh yeah so uh, i had another dream not too long ago where i was hitting on this super hot girl and she had like this beautiful dress it was plunging neckline very sexy and in the middle of this whole like flirting thing you know i'm like Oh, I'm married. And so like <laughs> it just comes to a screeching halt. Screeching halt. And I just had to like stop hitting on her. I'm like, and I wake up and I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> the only like Did you turn turn I... over and push your wife out of bed because you're a jerk? <laughs> no, but I told her about it. And I'm like, I yeah, I didn't cheat on because you know that whole like idea of women getting mad at men for cheating on them in their dreams you know oh yeah. so i guess my subconscious took that to heart and i won't even cheat on my wife in my dreams <laughs> so, you can't even have dream cheating no so well the last night wasn't that last night i just had to find a toilet so you know <laughs> that's uh so i suck in my dreams when it comes to I romance that first just, one though what's that that first one would you have rather that you continue with the sex dream and shit your pants in real life? Is that what you prefer would have happened? Or are you glad? Oh, no. <laughs> What's the, I'm just curious what the moral is here. It wasn't an emergency. It was just like I had to get up and you know, it was morning time. And uh, no, I, I, I don't want to poop the bed. You know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still too young for that. Uh, I hope. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> anyway, now you guys know that I'm I'm lame even in my dreams. You're so. not alone at all. I think I've had <laughs> one successful sex dream in my entire life, and and it was a it was the only time I had a nocturnal emission at a young I was at a young age, and so that was still a thing. But since mm -hmm. then, I've never had one. Anytime it got near it, it was something like that. Not that I had to poop or anything, but um, <laughs> that's, that's my secret cap. I always have to poop, but, anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's always something always comes up that makes it so that's just not going to happen. Or sometimes it must be a bad night where, where the woman just like laughs at me and then walks away. Oh, and I'm like, oh. okay, but you were in, I, cause I don't initiate in my dreams either because I have zero confidence in real life or in my dreams. So yeah, not alone <laughs> at all. It just said, John's like, I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dream me as a stud, man. Yeah, he says things like, I'm pulling bitches left and right in my dreams, or whatever those <laughs> terms are. I don't know. Not, not bitches. He's in a like Greek bathhouse with a bunch of men. So, <laughs> You know, I, I could be for all I know. I hardly ever even remember my dreams. <laughs> no, it's not men. It's oh, really? replaced men with dinosaurs. Like, he's having a bathhouse sex dream with dinosaurs. Dinosaur erotica. <laughs> yeah. that, would, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. I wish I could join your dreams. That sounds fun. John can't go to the Sinclair when they have those like dinosaur <laughs> like that. That Patasaurus on the you know, to that front. He's been like run off several times by the managers. <laughs> Echoes Dinosaur Park. I go there every year. And get kicked out every year. <laughs> so. can, baby. Well, so uh oh, other than sucking yeah. in your dreams, what else have you been up to? Anything anything great? I mean it's been a whole week. That was that was the highlight of my week. That was the highlight. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't shit your pants, bud. Thanks. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. What about you, John? Um, I actually, I kind of had a date of myself on uh, on Sunday. I did a little road trip, and I wanted to test out my new car, so I kind of just drove it for for an hour or so up north, and I. I went to this town called Corinne. You heard of that? I'm sure you have. Um, I used to work. Where, yeah, that's where Promontory Point is. You know the where the Transcontinental Railroad was was completed. Mm -hmm. I've actually never been there before, even though it's only an hour away and it's all historic mm -hmm. and stuff. So 
I, I drove up there to see that and you know that the whole golden spike thing and but you know it's something you can you, you can say you did did you take the golden spike you know I wanted to like I, I walked up to I walked up to the ranger lady at the counter and said hey is the actual golden spike out there like kind of like eyeing me suspiciously <laughs> it's, it's in Stanford University like holding like a, a pickaxe over one shoulder yeah. like a shovel. He's like, were you going to steal the golden spike? I'm like, no. Why would you ask that? Don't be silly. But no, I, the actual spike isn't there because of people like me who, who would have <laughs> tried to steal it, you know, hundreds of times over the last 150 years or however long it's been. Well, you should check out the, uh, maybe go after the uh, Declaration of Independence next then since, <laughs> since the golden There's spike didn't work out. That. Level know. up. <laughs> you know, I couldn't actually steal the golden spike like I wanted to, but I kind of did end up becoming a fugitive of the Utah State Parks Department anyway. They're, they're probably looking for me right now because apparently I was supposed to pay a fee to walk out there. <laughs> and I didn't know that until afterwards. And so I didn't pay it. Like when I just walked in the museum, the, the ranger at the counter was busy with this family. And I didn't see any sign saying there's a there's an entrance fee, and she didn't see me because she was busy. So I just walked around, saw everything in the museum, walked outside where they had where the spike would have been. You know, they had the where the railroad was completed, and they had the final beam they used to to complete it. And then they just walked back in, and by that time, the other family was gone. And I walked up to the the ranger counter, and I think she thought I was entering for the first time. So she's like, "Hey, for twenty bucks." entrance fee you can walk around and see the museum and go outside and see where the the spike was I'm like <laughs> hmm. <laughs> i'll think about it I'll, I'll let you know oh no <laughs> but i i did not i i just left and got in my car and drove off <laughs> so the utah state parks department is probably has this like nationwide manhunt looking for me with dogs and helicopters <laughs> and all because of that 20 dollar entrance fee i didn't know this i had to pay until it was too late absolutely they are mm -hmm. i don't think they have the budget for that i don't think so but it's supposed to be it's 20 dollars per car so like if i brought my whole family i would have paid the 20 bucks because that would have been worth it. i just walked around for a few minutes i didn't even watch any of the videos they had going and for 20 bucks for one person it felt excessive to me so i didn't feel I don't know. You may not feel bad, but you're going to feel bad when you see on the news that they have to close down because somebody paid $20. <laughs> a place has been open since 1869, and it closes down because of my 20 bucks. They, they should have had. They were on thin ice, man, and you you screwed them you over. You bankrupted the Golden I shut Spike down Museum. a historic <laughs> national treasure, a landmark the state of Utah shuts down because they didn't get my $20. That gives me more reason to have to blur your face for these videos so nobody knows that it is you. <laughs> I'm officially a few. I would be proud of that, actually. I kind of am, which is why <laughs> I'm bringing it up here. <laughs> I saw I saw their old railroad stuff for free. <laughs> you know, you should do like a scared straight thing for your kids about this whole thing. Just like sit them down, be like, you don't know rough, and then just tell them your story and be like, you're going to be a person <laughs> if you end up like me. Anyway. I've yeah, I'm hard now. Yeah. Yeah, you're that, so hard. I've done, I've done things. Things I'm not proud of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm officially a scoff law now. Oh, <laughs> scoff law. Yes. What is, you don't hear that is, word nearly often enough. No. Yeah, what right. is it? I've never heard it, actually. You've never heard of a scoff law? Man, I don't think so. Means you're, you're scoffing at the law. Oh, well, that Another makes word sense. For like a, an outlaw or a fugitive. He's a ne'er do well, scofflo. <laughs> I've heard that, but yeah. You know. But you know what else is in northern Utah that I stopped at as well? Hmm. There is a little hot spring off the right off of the the highway in Corinne called uh, used to be called Old Indian Springs, but now it's called Stinking Springs. And I gotta tell you, it lives up to its name. <laughs> the sulfur smell on that thing is overwhelming. I made the mistake of actually getting in it. Oh boy. And the smell did not go away for days. Even at <laughs> like the raw and egg sulfur smell that some hot springs have. 
Like I've been in hot springs a bunch of times before, and usually even the ones with a smell, one or two showers and it's gone. Mm-hmm. This one, it took like three showers and three loads of laundry. To, <laughs> and the smell's still there. I can still smell it in like my, my swim trunks and the towel and stuff. Oh, man. So you actually went into the stinky water. Yeah. Because it was warm. It felt good. <laughs> right out there in the middle of nowhere. But That's awesome. I'm so glad you smell <laughs> like that. Well, Here's a question. Because you know, Hos- we smell hot like that. Hot Springs buyers? is one of my... Exploring Hot Springs is one of my... It's a hobby, you know, like I've been through, I think most of the ones in, in Utah, and you meet some interesting people, interesting in a good and a bad way, <laughs> but I've never been to, I've never been to this one before. And so I, I tried it out and I, I don't know if I'll go back. Is you your, were by yourself? I was by myself, but the kids were with my wife that day, uh, visiting, uh, her sister or something. So I had the day to just drive around and, uh, test out my car, try and steal the golden spike and then, uh, soak in some really really hot springs is your goal to pee in every hot springs in in your vicinity or is that the whole yes yeah that's what i figured <laughs> keep chasing that dream john keep it's chasing the dream but i did not meet any skinny dippers or swingers i have met them at hot springs before so have you really oh yes <laughs> 20 years ago when i was in my 20s i used to get hit on a hot springs quite a bit by I've been propositioned by women, men, both at the same time, like couples. <laughs> I remember years back when I was in like my early twenties, I was at the the Saratoga Springs when in Lehigh. And I was just chilling there and this this fifty something year old guy comes up to me and says, Hey, you see my wife over there? And his wife's at the other corner. Yeah. He's like, you know, she's ready for you if you want her. Um Wow. Hey. Thanks. I'll pass, but thanks for the offer. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've seen people who uh, did not pass on offers such as that, where you walk in there and people are going at it in the tubs. It's like, oh, uh, turn around, walk away. So oh. this is why you don't get rejected in your sex dreams, John, because this stuff happens to you for real. <laughs> real <life. laughs> He knows he has no other frame of reference, Jason. He's not like us. <laughs> he, he should be <laughs> fair. These stories are from like twenty years ago. I haven't had a do you a have moment a, like that recent year old stories like that, Jason? I, I do not. <laughs> like I say hit up some hot springs and you'll meet some interesting folks. That's awesome. I mean, I wasn't looking for Anyway, that kind of action, but uh, I wasn't looking for it either. But sometimes well, I'm it not just, saying you are. I'm just sometimes it, it finds you. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it never did. <laughs> I have to take that back. About uh, oh, now I'm by myself ago. in this. Yeah, you're by yourself. Well, check this out though. I was at the uh, at a park, and uh, it was near my house before work, and I was playing Ingress. Do you guys remember Ingress? Yeah. It was it was pre Pokemon Go. And it's the same company, Niantic, and it's based off of Google Maps. And you basically find portals and you fight over the portals with the other team. And it it was a fun game and I enjoyed it. So I, portals were based in real life. So you'd go to places like the park. And I went and I'm walking toward where one of the portals is looking at my phone. And as I'm walking by this gentleman, probably, I don't know, 70s, like, oh, good morning. I said, oh, good morning. And start walking. He's like, good morning. Good morning. And then I <laughs> keep walking again, looking at my phone. He's like, good morning. Oh, what? Is that like code for something? It sounds like it. Yeah. And I look over at him like, good morning. And then I keep <laughs> looking at him and he goes, good morning. And points at his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like- that's like a code, apparently. Yeah, it's it's code. I didn't know that, and I was like, "Oh, I was like, oh, no, thank you." And then <laughs> just walked on, did my portal thing, and left. They're so like, I'm here to play video games. Yeah, <laughs> you adults with your adult games, go play over there in the bathroom. I'll be over here. But yeah, oh. Jason, so you are alone. I I had that that offer. Man, I mean, oh, I yeah. was I was the chubby kid who like when the the stranger van pulled up. They took my friend, and I wanted to go because I wanted candy or puppies too. Wasn't the your guy's friend like, John? <laughs> the guy's like, no, 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 no. You stay. We'll, we'll take him. And then he ended up on a milk carton. Like, 
super uh, famous. Yeah. <laughs> lame. 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 I'm so sorry. Super lame. It's all right. Yeah. No. Somehow I got married. And uh yeah. <laughs> Somehow uh, I got married. <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah. so you guys well, is... Go they're cleaning up the hot spring scene, I'll tell you that much. Now they're all family oriented, but twenty years ago it was the wild west out there. It's because they sent in the National Guard and just like they had a, you know, on the spot executions. You know, anyone found having, you know, hot spring coitus was put down with prejudice. A guy named <laughs> Judge something or other, and he's dressed up like Judge Dredd. Just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he was a serial killer, actually. I don't think he had any <laughs> legal authority. <laughs> no, no. But they were just like, well, I mean, he's cleaning the place up. Let's just not worry about it. Let's, we'll catch him later. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys are talking about uh, decent exposure, kind of. And I've, I've got a story. It happened to me about a month ago. Um, I joke about, about like, you know, streaking and, and taking my clothes off in public. I've lived the dream, let me tell you. Really? Um, yeah. So I went to get my flu shot at a, a, a grocery store here where I live now. That's a good And uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I went in the grocery stores during the day because my schedule's, you know, flexible. And uh, so, you know, it's just soccer moms and old ladies shopping and uh i I was wearing my hoodie uh john you probably remember my hoodie that i bought in san diego well that's my uniform now so um just the hoodie no i had all the the hoodie and nothing else hoodie and cargo shorts because i wear the you know uniform of dads (laughs) um anyway i went up to the counter i asked for you know flu shot and and they're like well we don't do it and like yeah you do like oh yeah we do and so um <laughs> they just so wanted I, you to leave basically and so like, like fine getting, yeah we do they're getting it ready <laughs> and yeah exactly and so i'm like well i gotta take off my hoodie because uh, and i gotta expose my arm to get the shot in and so you know instead of doing it right there in front of the almost all female pharmacy staff i decided to turn around step to the side and i pull my hoodie off well my shirt went with it uh your entire shirt yeah so not only did i so i turned my back to the girls at the pharmacy you know but um apparently everybody else at the store had like a line of sight on me <laughs> undressing did you hear and, cat uh, calls Woo! and children <laughs> screaming. Oh, definitely not oh, some so more skin. Woo! i don't get embarrassed very often but i i just about but I, well, first of all, I quickly put my shirt back on, and then I just about like trucked it out of there. Screw the flu shot! I almost left. Like, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I stayed. I got my flu shot. Unfortunately, no one said anything to me. But um, oh my gosh, I I was almost in tears, like out of embarrassment, because I I don't know. I, I I joke a lot, but I'm a pretty modest guy, and uh, no I'm one also... even tucked a few singles down your waistband. <laughs> if you're that would have. That would have soothed my pain, I think. I mean, but, if, if uh, you're going to give them a show, the least they can do is show you that they appreciate it, you know? Well, my body type isn't what we would call athletic. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Unless you're talking about sumo wrestling. <laughs> so, it's a sport. It is. But anyway, so that's uh, that was my uh, my traumatic story. Aside, aside from getting rejected in my own sex dreams, uh, <laughs> I, I flashed an entire grocery store full of mothers and grandmothers. So, and teenage kids who work <laughs> at the checkout they're all like high schoolers so hey, yeah. this uh this old guy's wife from 20 years ago is probably still waiting for me in that hot spring <laughs> if you want to go <laughs> check it out well that's all right <laughs> so there you go guys my i've lived the dream and it doesn't live up to the expectation so right on i guess i should talk about my stuff then yes oh i'm sorry yeah go ahead oh, don't be no this is what we do. Uh, I don't know. It's been honestly kind of an emotional day. Um, I guess. Oh, this just in. Breaking news. Well, I guess this is time for the Florida man updates of the week. <laughs> Um, and this is actually from this morning, February 29th, 2024. Leap day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Florida man crashes into a light pole after attempting to steal a plane. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, here's another one from also today. Uh, Florida man arrested after illegally shipping thousands of turtles to Germany, Hong Kong, and other countries halfway around the world. <laughs> Klaus, he wanted turtles. <laughs> John Kratziolis pleaded guilty to violating federal laws, including conspiring to traffic wildlife. <laughs> Fantastic. What are you in for? Murder. <laughs> what are you in for? Selling turtles. <laughs> Ship some turtles to Germany. <laughs> and this one is from 2019. It's actually February 28th because 2019 was not a leap year. Laura, the man who allegedly threatened family with cold play lyrics and standoff <laughs> after SWAT team promises him pizza. <laughs> Jason? Jason, was that you? Hey, hey, <laughs> I was acquitted. <laughs> A Florida man accused of threatening his family by texting them Coldplay lyrics, <laughs> warning them of retribution from his Nazi prison associates, was persuaded by police to end the standoff in return for one fresh slice of pizza. Nice. Evan Charles McLemore, under the belief that SWAT team negotiators were ready to hand him one of America's favorite foods, was taken into custody Tuesday following a four-hour confrontation at a Pensacola home. And he didn't get the pizza? No. Oh. Never underestimate the power of pizza with flavored crust, the Pensacola Police Department wrote on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what a miscarriage of justice he didn't get the pizza. <laughs> I hope they ate it in front of him. This, it is not immediately clear if responding officers actually did give McLemore a slice. Hmm. But they did deliver him charges of resisting an officer without violence and aggravated stalking. So. Let's let's be honest. The cold play was actually not just the threat. The lyrics of cold play were the punishment as well. Yeah. Can we just say that? Yeah. You didn't even get. So yeah, that is your Florida man updates for Leap Day. Well, I'm glad you interrupted my story. Wow. <laughs> your emotional story. I'm the one who pushed the button, folks. I shouldn't act like a dick. It sounded like yeah, that. Never mind. Anyway. Right. <laughs> it was like, awesome. it yeah. like it was John that did it. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we before that important update interrupted us? Well, Where I was trying to talk was... about my emotional day and what makes this a very special dysfunctional adults episode. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, very special. Very yeah, special. Every four years, special. <laughs> right. Uh, today, I, as you can see, decided to shave my head as an act of solidarity. I guess that's what makes it emotional, you know. Um, I didn't want this part of my this part of my head to feel bad, so I made the rest of this part of my head <laughs> the same as this part of my head, and I murdered the rest of my hair. <laughs> my oldest brother recently did the same thing. <laughs> he said he saw. A vid he's a lawyer. He says he saw a videotape of himself in a, a courtroom and he said he had no idea the bald spot on the back of his head was so big. So after seeing that, he went straight home and shaved his entire head. Yep. <laughs> like in the middle of a trial, like he goes back for the rest of the trial with like a shaved head. Uh, yep. <laughs> May I approach the bench? We need a recess. <laughs> so that's fine, but the swastika he tattooed on his forehead, that's... how. Why did he do that? Zach. Like was Zach or my brother? Your brother. Yeah, I, I don't have one. Your lawyer brother. <laughs> that may have cost him the trial. <laughs> His Jewish clients did not appreciate that. So, Zach, no, it's, you... it's the Hindu symbol for peace. <laughs> have, have I mentioned that we have actually, I work in a furniture distribution store. You know, you guys know that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, have I mentioned that we have gotten pieces from India with swastikas on them before? Oh, I mean, that no. makes sense, considering it's... Yeah, there's there's been a... Origins. Oh, sorry. There's been at least three products that I know of that we've had to pull from stock and send back because of swastikas. Oh, wow. Oh. One of them was like this little decorative brick set that was, you know, you put in your backyard. Some of the bricks had swastikas on them. Another one was like a, a cabinet that had swastikas on it. 
they were all from uh they were from India, which you know was originally a Hindu symbol, so they still use it for its original meaning sometimes, but the the rest of the world not so much. Right. They right. really need to get with the times. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the third piece, though, was just a base that had like swirly lines on it. One woman saw it and thought it looked like a swastika, and so she made a big stink of it. And so we had to pull of it. You really oh. had to be looking at, looking for it in that <laughs> vase. I looked at that vase all over. Like I would have never made that. Yeah. Even after so, it was pointed pointed out, I couldn't really see it. As a religious person, if somebody took the angel Moroni symbol. And then, like, went to war and tried to exterminate an entire race, you know, based on that symbol. I'm pretty sure that my church would abandon that symbol. Just saying. Yeah, or like the CTR shield or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. It, it's kind of stu- it's kind of stubborn to be holding out these last seventy years. That no, we had it first. We're going to keep using this symbol that the rest of the world thinks is pure evil, just to prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We should in, we should like interview somebody from India and uh, ask him about that. Yeah. I'll uh, uh, next I, time I get a scam call, I'll just uh, plug him into oh, our. No, <laughs> what you can't <laughs> say? Okay, listen. Everybody can be mad about that all they want. <laughs> That's awesome. But where do most of my spam or scam calls come from? No, no, I no. It's true. Yeah, there's a lot of places it comes from, but that no. that's the one that you know, No, it's, it's just India. You know what I find amusing though? When you get those scam calls that someone with a thick Indian accent and then they have a name like, you know, Chuck Stevens or something. <laughs> they always have, they, real name, oh, of right. course not, but they always make up like the most American name you could think of. You know, a thick mm-hmm. Indian accent. This is Joe Smith, you know, and they're asking about medications or whatever they want you to buy but i kind of don't blame them though there is this thing i've noticed in the united states and i'm sure it happens in other countries as well but i only live in the united states but i've noticed that anybody with a name that is from another country that isn't simple a simple known american name it's almost like people choose to have a hard time with saying some of the names, even if it's said to them to their face multiple times, they it's like they shut off and like, no, I just oh, I can't. Uh, it's too yeah. hard. And it, you yeah. know, so I kind of don't blame them that that they just do that. Yeah. But but it is funny, too, though. Like, yeah, <laughs> I've experienced this with my last name. And I bet you have as well. Zach. Right. Like just because our names are, are foreign and uncommon and European sounding, they're still really easy to spell and pronounce. Right. <laughs> my name is two syllables long. It's spelled exactly how it sounds, and it sounds exactly how it's spelled. <laughs> right. And yet it's been mispronounced so many times. Like, when I was growing up, like, my family, we had, like, a, a little bulletin board that we kept by the phone. Mm. Every mispronunciation of our name, we'd write it down to keep track of it because it was, it was so funny. That... <laughs> and for the record, I was one of those people when I first met John, so... <laughs> Would, would yeah, you, I remember you, you couldn't say his last name? You were just like, oh, no, I just was too lazy to learn it. Like, I, uh, and I, this is a true story. I remember sending him a birthday card, giving him a birthday card, and I totally spelled his name wrong. And <laughs> well, I mean, he wasn't was even close, no, but was it? <laughs> I mean, I can't get into it on air because I don't want to say your name, but pretty sure I was a little bit in left field with it. So <laughs> I've, I've definitely seen worse. Like All right, well. a lot of them are not even phonetically correct. Like they'll take like the first three letters and then just make up whatever ending they want. To <laughs> They're like, Oh, you're John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Literally. you're not even saying words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With my last name being Bjorgi is how we say it, even though that's cor- incorrect, but uh B j curveball you know <laughs> yeah and uh, sorry I, I thought you were offering my bad yeah no there's a lot of expectation with your last name zach <laughs> i've been to hot springs i know all these codes <laughs> good morning if this good guy had morning. said good morning to me i would have said no thanks right off the bat i would have made him repeat it three or four times <laughs> good morning <laughs> i'll take oh. one please um, oh sad so uh, I guess uh, it's in in uh, keeping with the theme of it being emotional. Um, 
I've been going through a lot of changes with, with emotional changes. You know, I do a lot of therapy, all this stuff. We all know I have depression and I'm probably schizophrenic or something. I don't even know. I don't think the doctors know. But anyway, um, <laughs> living with a little bit more self-awareness, self-compassion, um, living vulnerably and authentically, saying what I mean, meaning what I say, that kind of thing. Uh, that's why I shaved my beard because I have no chin and I'm tired of acting like I do. So you have um, a beard. What's that? Well, I know, but I shaved all the big part off that made it look oh, more like I had part. a chin. Yeah. And I just want to live more authentically instead of lying to y'all because uh, it's only fair that I that I live the truth. No chin. I have no chin. Did you, shave you look quite dapper. Everything below the neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. The southern red like, forest a, is... Like a naked mole rat below your neck? It's uh, like a newborn babe. Smooth. Just... <laughs> Like you should feel it. It's like just, oh, man. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's all I got. Man, manscaped the hell out of your lower half, right? Oh, speaking. Okay. No, I really do. I do take care of all that down there because it's otherwise. I mean, it's hot here in Albuquerque. So anyway, um, <laughs> I have. I got one of those manscaped lawnmowers. Right. It's, yeah. it's a big mm -hmm. deal there for a little while. And I think I got the 3.0 and they're on the 4.0 or whatever now. And I've had this for a little while. Every single time I've attempted to use it and they talk about that you will not cut yourself on your scrotum if you use this on your scrotum. <laughs> and that's a goddamn lie. Because I, cut myself, I, I bleed every single time I do this. I try to use it. I'm like, well, maybe this time I'll figure it out. And I'm like squeezing the sack, trying to smooth out the skin. And I'm like <laughs> shaving the shit, you know, like trying to, uh, and it's just, it catches, you know, I don't know if I've just got the wrinkliest scrotum in the world and everybody else is smoother, much like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, that's... <laughs> That's my rant about the, the ball. Uh, <laughs> that's where you don't want cuts. It hurts. Yeah. I guess for the, where do you want cuts though, really? Not there. Yeah. Not, not there. No. Not there. Not anywhere. Well, I think we got through everything and all we need to do is uh, show and tell, I guess. Show, show and tell. Are we yeah. missing something? I feel like something's missing, but. I, I did want to share a TikTok with you. Oh, um, let's do it. What's yeah. up? I sent it in the chat. In the chat. The, Make sure you when you share your screen though you pick, I think the browser so we can see it on the video. Say what? Pick the browser. Yeah, you know you you know what you're doing. No, so no, I, I don't. All right, well, <laughs> copy link, close Pornhub, <laughs> <laughs> close only Grands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a quality site. <laughs> Close only geese. <laughs> I love a good unhinged fan theory. And there's one making the rounds on TikTok right now from Confused Breakfast. Has like 2 million views right now. That says Billy Madison, Con Air, and The Big Lebowski all take place in the same universe. The gist of it is Steve Buscemi plays a guy who has a kill list in Billy Madison. Uh, and then he plays a serial killer in Con Air. Uh, plane crashes. Everyone thinks uh, the serial killer's dead. But then we see Steve Buscemi is still alive in Las Vegas at the end. So he could have moved to uh, Los Angeles for the Big Lebowski where he uh, ends up actually dying. But there's one thing that's preventing this fan theory from adding up for me. Billy Madison, Con Air, and Big Lebowski uh, came out in 1995. 1997 and 1998 and that's kind of the the order we see in the fan theory but the big lebowski does not take place in the year 1998 it takes place in 1990 or 1991 in the beginning of big lebowski we see him write a check post dated september 11th 1991 don't look into that don't make any more fan theories okay you can stop it now and then he watches a news broadcast okay <laughs> so this guy's <laughs> pissing all over my joy um He's being one of those nitpickers, but basically what the theory goes is that do you remember the guy in Billy Madison who's got the kill list? Yeah. Played yeah, by Steve course. Buscemi. Well, uh the the theory is he went through with the kill list, of course, skipping Billy Madison. And, yeah, I remember uh, he crossed Billy Madison off when Billy called uh, him to apologize. Right before he put on the lipstick. <laughs> and, uh, and then he, he did end up shooting that guy scene. at the end of Billy Madison, don't remember. Yep, he did. So uh, the idea in the, the conspiracy theory is that on, in Con Air, that character is actually that character, and he got <laughs> arrested after killing everybody on his list. And then it goes further, you know, how Con Air ends with him, you know, escaping and going to gamble, and that he's the character from Big Lebowski who 
gets cremated in the end. Um, Nani. Super, super funny. Uh, th- that was not actually the correct video, but I, I thought I found it. But basically, that's the idea. Mm. I think it's just super, super clever. So um, <laughs> you can cut this if you want to. That, that didn't work out how I'd imagine. Sorry. Yeah, we can we can try it on another episode if you're not happy with that one. That's totally fine. We can do it again. <laughs> that's fine. You can just cut it. And we'll see. So anyway, I just thought it was fun. Yeah. And we could do the uh, the Jar Jar Binks one too, because that one to me. I was just thinking good. that. Yeah. I love that theory. So. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we should move on to show and tell. Sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. Please don't apologize. Trying new things, you know. What's that? Trying new things. Did somebody just puke? <laughs> I uh, I forgot to download because I did. I told you I isolated the sound that made me say. Did somebody just puke? And uh, I isolated it and turned it up a little because it was quiet. It was very quiet. Uh, what I think it was was a distortion, and it was either that John farted because it came from his. his <laughs> That's not me. It came from his soundtrack uh, in the in the audio files. It came from his track, and it it probably wasn't a fart. I just wanted to say that, but uh, but the second part of it because it was like a and then it was like a, later, that second part sounded more like john laughing but that the sound got distorted as it went through the internet as it you know you know that kind of like digital sound so i think it, the whole thing was just john you know chuckling at something and it in it distorting a little bit but but the first one and i will download it and add it to our sound effects list does sound like somebody going there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's an evp of a sick ghost <laughs> it could be oh puking forever in the afterlife that sucks <laughs> And now it's time for Show and Tell. Oh, who's first on this very special Leap Year episode, you guys? Hmm. Don't all raise your fucking hands at once. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll go. I'll go for. Oh, I'll go first. Uh, all right, you all go. right. Go from no one going to everyone going. Everybody's at once. all right. Fine, we'll yeah. Okay, on three. Let's all just say them at the same time and see how it's. Oh, going. good call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to work. So, all right. So, keeping with lists, um, stuff pretty much curated from Reddit. Uh, this is the top ways people have quit their jobs. Um, nice. <laughs> and. I found these on Cracked. I, I took a page out of Zach's book. Um, so anyway, uh, let's let's go ahead and get started here. I'm not going to be able to read all of them. Um, that's because you don't know how to read. That's that's part of part of it. But um, there's just too many, so I'm going to give you the highlights. Uh, so this one says. I knew a couple of dipshits who stole cell phones from the warehouse they worked at and used them while working at the warehouse they stole them from. <laughs> I had the pleasant job of busting them, busting them dumbasses. Uh, this one made me laugh. Uh, this guy got fired from a oh, Walmart. Be- sorry, not to interrupt you, but when you're, I have a, a real life story from my work similar to that last one you just said. When we okay. Came. Nice. Okay. Just remind me to, to say it. So this guy got fired from a Walmart because he felt bad that the beta fish were alone in those small glass bowls. So he put all the beta fish in the biggest, in the bigger tanks with the other fish. The betas killed all the other fish and then each other. That's what they do. Do you remember when we were kids, they were called Siamese fighting fish? Yeah. I forgot they were called that. That's right. I also remember they used to sell brawn at a pet store when I was a kid. Remember that? I do remember at Western stopped, Gardens. Western Gardens, yeah. They stopped doing it when they kept turning up in local <laughs> lakes and stuff. Wow. Oh, they still occasionally catch some at a lake. Like every every couple of years, someone catches a piranha there. Wow. That's kind of cool. Who shouldn't cool. be there? <laughs> <laughs> so here's anyway. one that's fun. A guy got sacked for uh, pleasuring himself in the toilets repeatedly. John. Verbal warning, written warning, termination. Three times he was caught smashing one out. Claimed he had high testosterone and he had to do it for medical reasons. <laughs> how is he getting away with saying that? Sorry, what? That is kind of a good question. How is he getting caught? He must be loud. <laughs> um, 
Well, it's so, probably not like a, a private stall with a lock on the door, right? <laughs> or he's a yeah. boner. So that's, that's I think he's a boner. He put a what I used to work out. Board. I used to work out at a gym, a local gym here, and I'm not going to say which one. Uh, but when I was in the locker room in the shower, we it was so busy we'd have to like line up, and so we're waiting for this guy in the shower to get out, and he's like, "Oh man, oh, oh <laughs> yeah," and we are everybody in line is looking at each other like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> yep. So that's probably how that other guy got caught. He was having wow. a good morning. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Uh, here's another one. A consultant was sacked for refusing to evacuate during a fire alarm because he was just too busy to leave his desk. I get that, <laughs> actually. I've been tempted to do that myself. We have way too many fire drills in my work. and mm-hmm. just want to get some shit done. I know it's not a real fire. <laughs> yep. Can you, alone, get, can you get fired for that? I, I could get written up for it, yeah. That's it's like we all, the whole building evacuates. I work in a place with like 400 people, and then we all have to evacuate. We stand outside for 10 minutes, and we just go back inside to go back to work. Our half well, I love that. people that you work with, elementary kids, because <laughs> that makes sense if they need to be taught how to leave a building when it's on fire. But right. you're, you're like 59 years old. Like, come on. Thereabouts, yeah. You know, it's funny. Is there's, that reminds me of this episode of The Simpsons where they, they do have that uh, fire drill at oh, Homer's yeah. work. And he gets out first, and then he boards up the, the entrance. <laughs> so nobody else door, can yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is breaking windows to climb out. <laughs> That's the team building activity one. So, <laughs> uh, Here's another one. This guy got fired for watching porn on a company computer in the middle of the factory. His office had windows on every side, and there was a few dozen workers watching the manager watch porn. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. That's traumatizing. Here's one I've never heard before. Uh, this guy was dismissed due to the size of his bagels. He worked at a f- bagel factory, um, and uh, they, he kept his bagels were just too big or too small, but they kept, uh, I guess, eventually they had to fire him because he couldn't get the right size of bagel. And none so. of this is a euphemism. No, this is not he's this is literally bagels. Okay. He's making so. bagels like the size of like toilet seat covers. Like, <laughs> you could use them as a flotation device. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let's get a couple more good ones. Um some of these are just like illegal like things that they should have sued about. Um so this guy says his boss fired him in the emergency room for getting his finger bitten down to the bone by an octopus. Um, I kind of want to know what the rest of the story was there. Um, I want to hear the octopus's side, honestly. <laughs> you know, the guy was asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably dressing provocatively. Um, <laughs> there's a guy who got fired uh, from a pet smart because he was eating the catnip. He thought he could get a buzz from it. Um, <laughs> That shot. works, Zach. I'll admit it. I've <laughs> I've tried smoking catnip in my younger years. I tried it. Does it work? No. It burns. And he's, Did you start like number... batting around the ball of yarn? <laughs> <laughs> Rolling around, having people rub your stomach. And... Yeah. I look at my cat and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that leads to some unpleasantness. Uh that's where the cut on your sack came from. I one from the lawnmower. <laughs> Aw. Uh, finally the last one I'll share with you is this guy made a bong out of a ketchup dispenser and that was the only ketchup dispenser at the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute so, why is that the only ketchup dispenser what is that kind of on them yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who, who's next it? oh you're done okay fine. I am done. John had a story though about somebody getting fired oh right yes oh no it wasn't someone getting fired it was a, a customer who tried to rip us off this week it was a complete dumbass <laughs> okay this customer bought a, a large white sound bar but then he sent us a picture of a small black sound bar inside the box and said hey uh i bought this sound bar from you guys but when i opened it up this is what was inside the box instead 
So I actually went and pulled down all the, the white sound bars we had. I opened up every single one up and looked at them to see if maybe the vendor really was shipping the wrong thing. And no, every single one of them was a, lar a large white sound bar, just the way it should be. So what we, we still didn't really believe him. So what we wanted to do, we asked him to send us the serial number of the little black sound bar so we could track it through Sonos, who, you know, who made the sound bar. Because mm. we could we'd be able to buy the serial number, tell when if if he bought it from us or if he didn't even buy it from, from our company. This was this was our way of uh, kind of weeding out his lies. But instead of instead of sending the serial number on the little black sound bar, he took a picture of the serial number of the big white sound bar, <laughs> which he supposedly <laughs> didn't even have, and he sent that into yeah. us. And so we denied his claim for a, a return. <laughs> and then at that point, he still wouldn't come clean. He said, oh, uh, my brother pranked me. He switched what? out the sound bars in the box and, and taped it back up again. Mm. Rather than just admitting that he was trying to rip us off. He was trying to get two for the price of one. He bought mm -hmm. the one. So we'd send him his money back and he'd buy another one. And he did not fall. So basically, that's not how I'm going to get a sound bar. You talk after this. No, no, I, okay. I told you, Zach, we're not falling for that again. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, your attempt did not work. Nice, <laughs> a nice try. Well, uh, you wanna you wanna flip for you it? Want me to go, or you wanna go? Don't, Don't matter. I'll go. John's is yours are usually really funny, and it's a good way to end the podcast. You know, I only have two short. But I do think they're funny. All right. I am back on my bullshit, and also, I am uh, doing what I did. Was it last episode? Random facts. Yeah, yeah. All right. For nearly sixty years, Texas did not have an official state flag between eighteen seventy nine and nineteen thirty three. During that time, the Lone Star flag was active, but the unofficial flag. I believe <laughs> since 1933, their state flag has just been a bunch of pictures of people with intellectual disabilities being executed in various ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. just a picture of an electric chair against the, the <laughs> red backdrop. We love killing people, it says right on the bottom. You know? <laughs> Texas, come here to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Texas, red solo cups are a common souvenir to bring back from the United States. The novelty comes from the cups being used in many party scenes in movies. Next time you're uh, balking at the price of the red solo cups, remember who to blame and in this order. Next to the fucking Canadians uh, <laughs> who already have red solo cups, the largest number of international visitor arrivals in 2023 were the fucking Mexicans, the fucking Brits, the fucking Indians, the fucking Germans. Uh, give us our cups back. <laughs> you feel strongly about this one <laughs> i'm just tired of the price you know it's their fault it's all these damn <laughs> foreigners and their cup taking ways their cup buying ways i buy the clear <laughs> cups now <laughs> <laughs> and i when i got mad and said to give us our cups back i should have looked not at your at the screen i should have looked at the camera <laughs> <laughs> all right venetia bernie fair was an accountant and taught economics and math in England. But what she will best be remembered for is what she accomplished at age 11, giving the planet Pluto its name. In an interview with NASA in January of 2006, Fair said she offered the name Pluto over breakfast with her mother and grandfather. And, uh, Methinks, dearest mother and grandsire, as we break from our fast on this morn, because this is how Brits talk, <laughs> christen yon celestial wanderer Pluto, a name of whimsy and wonder. And then I just imagine her grandfather getting annoying, silence, fool, or getting annoyed, silence, fool, eat thine crumpets. And then uh, anyway, <laughs> in an interview, yeah. Give her a taste uh, of the back of his hand. <laughs> in an interview, Bernie is modest about her stroke of genius. She came up with Pluto mostly because the other major names from classical mythology had already been taken, she said. But she is indignant on one point. She did not name the planet for Pluto the dog, a Disney character <laughs> that came in the same year. 
the lady doth protest too much, methinks. I'm yeah. She, yeah, let's not. She's well, like, they shot down Goofy, so they named the Pluto instead. <laughs> Dude, I would have loved that if that... A planet named Goofy planet. is like Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, and Goofy. <laughs> Goofy. The bastard planet. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I like being a planet. <laughs> uh, Although I'm all alone, <laughs> and I don't know, I, I seem to come across a lot of Pluto stuff at this point, and and a lot of Pluto stuff happened in 2006. So that interview with her was, uh, in her interview with NASA was in 2006. Uh, Hasn't in- Pluto been downgraded? It's like no longer even a planet. Well, here we. I mean, let me tell you. All right. In 2006, <laughs> the IAU, International Astronomical Union, made a now infamous vote, demoting Pluto to a dwarf planet and making it turn its turn in its badge and gun. It didn't meet the criteria needed to be a full sized planet. Immediately after this announcement, the public lost their fucking minds. There were marches, riots, acts of self immolation, looting. It was pandemonium, you guys. Uh, we don't really need a reason as human beings to do those things. It can really be anything. Like Pluto being not a planet. I, I bet you like 12 people died in that riot. <laughs> because we'll of Pluto's riot. classification as a dwarf planet. <laughs> right. We'll riot and loot for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so make Pluto a planet again or I'll eat this kitten. That kind of shit. Um, <laughs> after years of de- deliberation, the IAU announced that they were giving Pluto its badge and gun back and promoting it to detect- Detective 2, which is a supervisory <laughs> position, by the way. They upgraded, <laughs> they upgraded Pluto back to its proper standing as a planet. Uh, we simply underestimated the public's attachment to Pluto. We, reali- we realized our error shortly after dis- the decision came down to demote it, said one doctor. Now, I don't know how to feel about the whole thing because it smacks of pandering to our feelings. Like, I want... Yeah, I was going like, to say I, that. We got what we wanted, but we didn't want it like that. Well, it's either... You gotta, it's either a planet based on the scientific criteria or right. it's not. Right. Public outcry should not change that. Right. And I guess in the, <laughs> you in, know, in the end, it doesn't hurt anything, but what's that? Right. I'm just saying that we look back and say, oh, those idiots they used to fight wars over their pretend gods. <laughs> and we're here like bitching about Pluto being downgraded <laughs> and apparently uh, rioting. <laughs> I say we, we really are... haven't come that far as a people. Right. No, not at all. I, I want it to be a planet that. just so that the solar system diagram I made in like third grade is accurate. <laughs> Do you still have it? You look at it every once in a while. And you're like, Man, remember the days? Like, You're like damn the IAU or whatever it was, whatever. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should petition for it to be named Goofy. I think John's idea is fantastic. <laughs> Great. I mean, if we can get, if they can get this done and get a reclassification as a planet when it's clearly yeah. not, then it can be named Goofy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Manawi is a small town in Boyd County, Nebraska, USA. Obviously, I like that they put <laughs> USA like. Whoa. Wait, I'm which Nebraska? Which Nebraska? <laughs> um, it's it's in Nebraska, Ghana. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a small town in Nebraska with a population of one. The sole resident, ninety year old, and it this is an older article, and uh, she was like eighty something. I looked it up. She's ninety. She just turned ninety. Ninety uh, year old Elsie Eiler is the mayor, bartender librarian and essentially the entire town's government elsie eiler's husband passed away and she is the last remaining resident of manawi uh despite its tiny population manawi does does have its own town ordinance and hosts an annual manawi days events or event Uh, so is she like you said it was a woman right yeah is she like mayor and sheriff and yeah she's mayor <laughs> bartender librarian and essentially the entire town's government so nice. she's all of it so and, she can uh, do whatever she wants right i mean who's gonna stop her makes that's all the kind the of laws. Time. what's that makes all the laws yeah it's probably kind of nice that's nice. the kind of town i'd like to settle down in and as i've heard the bartender's pretty cute <laughs> so you, you know, really honest- are on only grants <laughs> <laughs> it kind of right do you remember when Bryce, our friend Bryce, lived on Antelope Island? 
Yeah, with his oh, sister. What? He lived on Christ lived island. on Antelope Island. What population was like four. <laughs> Literally that explains the, so much about him. The the populate the permanent population of Antelope Island at the time there was like two park rangers, a tour guide, <laughs> and, and <Christ>. him. <laughs> and one of those park rangers his was sister, his sister. Yeah, yeah, his sister was one of the park rangers and he was living with her. So he lived on an island with three other people on the whole island. Okay. But it's like, okay. hey, yeah, 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 the population's four, but when my kids come to visit, the skyrockets up to six. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Just it is defense. Knows, Antelope Island is a is an island in the Great Salt Lake, right? By the Great Salt yeah. Lake, yeah. So it's it's like within it's near the big city. So for it to be so lowly populated is really funny. Yeah. Well, it's a state park, which I'm probably banned from now because of the you know promontory <laughs> point thing. But... <laughs> I wouldn't think anyone would live inside a state park, but I guess the park rangers and the poor guy make sense. Yeah. And then like, Bryce. Yes. That makes sense. <laughs> right. I just had a picture of him like riding buffalo out there. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Just, you know. <laughs> riding uh, a bison. Because for those who don't know, that's also like where they keep buffalo. I don't know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a herd of free ranging bison on Antelope Island. It's one of the largest in the United States. Yeah. And they are bison, not buffalo, Jason. Whatever. <laughs> uh, tell me more about your roots, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just found out that I'm Native American. I don't know all the stuff yet. <laughs> <laughs> no one sent me a manual, and I've asked. Like, I'm sending like emails out to like the the Choctaw Nation and the Navajo, and nobody's like replying to me. Like, I guess they don't. None want of them me. want to claim you. I'm surprised you're not one of those people that, like, when they find out that they're a significant portion of an indigenous population or pers- uh, lineage, I don't know what I'm saying, but that you're not doing that thing where you, like, start using the word. You're like, oh, yeah, we're talking about Tatanka, you know, and just, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just throwing the words in there like it's all natural for you now. It's it's super funny when, like, really white people do it. Like, oh, I'm one 208th Cherokee. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, you took this land from my people. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. I should just start using that as an excuse anytime I get like any kind of pushback at stores. You know, I try to return something, you know, and they're like, well, you can't return that. You don't have a receipt. Well, you didn't return my land. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled pull the race card at every single opportunity. I want to. I have like I, a I, whole deck of race cards so you never, like, never run out of them. Like Zach pointed out, I don't know enough about. I don't even know what tribe I belong to. So. <laughs> oh, man, that was funny. Well, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, you're just, this is what we do. This is this is great. <laughs> uh, I am native, though. If anyone wants to see my genealogy DNA test, I'll happily send it to you. I guess. Yep. Just so you know, the American buffalo and the bison are the same thing. Shut up, John. <laughs> It doesn't matter to him because to him they're Tatanka. <laughs> also, I know the Indians fought or Native Americans fought dinosaurs at some point, according to an N64 game. So Turok the <laughs> Turok. dinosaur hunter. <laughs> I under- <laughs> Are you gonna change your name again? <laughs> <laughs> I understand that that was based on history, right? Like <laughs> it's historically accurate. Yes. You change your name, you change your lineage like you just oh man You're... i'm gonna, gonna go like libyan in like another month or something no i'm gonna go to sinclair and kick that patasaurus's ass you know <laughs> dressed in like loincloth with bows and arrows <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> with a sledgehammer i'll just knock his head off <laughs> they didn't have sledgehammers in turok i've played it enough to know <laughs> It's like, it's okay. I'm native. <laughs> Just remember, if any of this is offensive, Jason's indigenous. He can say this. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for the DNA test, damn it. I'm going to use my <laughs> bragging rights. You are getting your money's worth for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that is like so abusive of your. <laughs> oh my god. 
Okay. All right. Lose your place, Zach. What's that? Lose your place. Uh, no, it's right here. <laughs> it's just none of this is going to be as funny as that. <clears throat> <laughs> The Ethiopian calendar is 7.5 years behind the Gregorian calendar due to the fact that it has 13 months, which is fantastic because there have been some arguments from the past seven and a half years I've been obsessing over and think I finally have some good comebacks for. I'll just call those assholes from Ethiopia. <laughs> well, the 13 months were all like 12 years or so younger than we thought we were. Say what? If the calendar is 13 months for a year, hmm. we're all younger. Several, a decade or so younger than we thought. I like that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Let's four, do it. Five years, four years, whatever that would be. I'm going to start telling people year. I'm 34. Yeah. So. If they press you for it, just be like, well, I mean, the Ethiopian calendar, as we all know, is seven, you know, and say, <laughs> I mean, Jay, Jason, we're going to find out he's Ethiopian in another couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, next DNA next test, test he takes. So. I just make the rounds. Yeah. I'm like, hey guys, I want to join you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. In 1994, the company that had the patent on gifts tried to charge a fee for using gifts. The PNG oh was invented as an alternative and the company backed down. And incidentally, <laughs> a veritable civil war has broken out uh, over whether it's pronounced ping or pinge. Oh my gosh. Really. I just made that up. All right. <laughs> I believe it. Um, I think I've got two more. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. China is spending $3 billion to build panda shaped solar farms in order to get more young children or people interested in renewable energy. And taking a page out of China's book, there has been a push here in the States recently to get renewable energy opponents to also take an interest but it's proving to be expensive to create solar farms in the shapes of every opponent's family members naked <laughs> <laughs> i'm proud of that one all right that's a good one to properly write adjectives in order i learned this about writing and whatever to properly write adjectives in order when you're using multiples in a sentence you would list them by amount Value, size, temperature, age, shape, color, origin, and material. And I never knew this, but it makes sense. And I made a sentence for you guys. <clears throat> <laughs> Under the pyramid, during an archaeolo archaeological excavation, I discovered a handful of precious, tiny, cool, ancient, round, green, Egyptian, Ceramic beads connected by a string and some honey and crocodile dung lubricant. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I saw that for sale at Adam and Eve. <laughs> did you did you get it? Mm. <laughs> I think I'd be able to tell if I were near you, but we're far away, so yeah, well. I smell like honey and dung. <laughs> Your turn, no, John. Oh my. Yep. All right. Chinese zoo denies accusations that its sun bears are really just people in costumes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The zoo in eastern China has denied suggestions that some of its bears might really just be people in costumes. After videos of a Malayan sun bear standing on its hind legs and looking uncannily human went viral. <laughs> Fueling rumors and conspiracy theories on Chinese social media. <laughs> He's like looking at his watch. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not far off. Like you watch the video, like you know how most bears when they kind of stand on their hind legs, they're like they're awkward looking. This one's standing like perfectly straight with like its legs together, and it even like lifts up its paw like it's waving to the people. <laughs> the way it's standing, like you could put a microphone in front of it and it would look like it's doing like a stand up routine or something. <laughs> it's like double birding some people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it appears to be waving. And then another part that uh, fueled the speculation was unlike it's it's like wrinkled on its butt. Like it would look like the folds of a costume if someone stood up. <laughs> However, uh, wildlife experts have chimed in and said that sun bears really do are more comfortable standing than other types of bears. 
I guess apparently the mother bears even can pick up their cubs with their front paws and walk holding them on their, their hind legs. Oh, and wow. they have loose skin, which is what accounts for the, the folds and what looks like a costume. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a person in a costume? Absolutely. It really does, yeah. <laughs> um, despite, despite this, uh, these suspicions being debunked, speculation was not entirely without merit, though as other Chinese zoos have been busted in the past for trying to hold <laughs> similar shenanigans. My such gosh. as spray painting stripes on horses and calling them zebras. Awesome. Yes. Or having exhibits with domestic dogs or cats and calling them wolves or baby lions. <laughs> <laughs> in 2013, a city zoo in the central Henan province angered visitors by trying to pass off a Tibetan mastiff dog as a lion. <laughs> I think visitors who approached the enclosure caught on and expressed shock when they heard the lion bark. <laughs> <laughs> visitors at another Chinese zoo in Sichuan province were shocked to discover a golden retriever sitting in a cage labeled as an African lion enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> What a half ass zoo. That's fantastic. <laughs> we should just make a zoo that is all those things, and then every once in a while it have an actual real animal that it's, you know, but otherwise it's just people. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just want to lock people up in cages. Actually, I just want to dress up as a sheep. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, could pull it off in a Chinese zoo. <laughs> just don't go to Texas, man. Because <laughs> they'd execute me. Yeah, because uh, I apparently have. I think worse than execute. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, if I was seven feet tall, my lifelong ambition would not be to like enter the NBA. It would to have like a full size gorilla suit made for me, and then run through the woods faking Sasquatch sightings until he got shot. <laughs> the thing is, yeah. <laughs> how long do you think it would take before a hunter shot me and like mounted my head on the wall? <laughs> Days in Texas. In Texas, minutes. Minutes, yeah. The, the I think they they shoot me, realize I was just a human in a costume, and then shrug and mount my head on the wall. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so one last quick one. Uh, this one you could entitle, uh, Never Piss Off an Elephant. Mm. <laughs> an elephant kills woman, then returns to her funeral to trample her corpse. <laughs> 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 This is in uh, Elephant Odisha, always remember India. Sixty-eight-year-old <laughs> Maya Murmu was collecting water in Rapai village when a herd of elephants came her way. She tried to flee, but one of the elephants rushed toward her and trampled her to death. <laughs> what a dick move! <laughs> Murmu's family brought her body home for funeral preparations to take place that evening. But as the ceremony was taking place, this elephant and several others charged into the village, <laughs> pulled her body from the funeral pile, pyre, like from the fire, pulled it out of the funeral pyre, fire, trampled it again, <laughs> then picked it up, spun her around, and threw her body. And then the elephants went on a rampage through the village and destroyed four houses, including hers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my hell. That is wow. bizarre. Yeah. Don't piss off an elephant. They will not no. just kill you. They will <laughs> crash your funeral, destroy your village. Mm -hmm. I mean, trample your body, chuck it into the woods. I just, I imagine. An elephant whatever, never forgets. It doesn't. Oh yeah, whatever this lady did to piss off the elephant, it did not forget. Yeah, it did. It's, it, it, it trampled her or whatever, killed her the first time. And then later it's just thinking about it. And it's like, you know what? No. You know what? I'm finishing this shit. I'm, finishing I'm not it. done. I am not. Her, her death is not the end of this. <laughs> Screw her. Screw her village. <laughs> Come on, level, guys. <laughs> the level of violence from a usually peaceful creature has many wondering what could have caused such behavior. It's an elephant gang. <laughs> They're the tusks. <laughs> 
I like the way it came back with its posse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a whole herd of pissed off elephants. Come on, guys. <laughs> I kick this lady's ass. <laughs> She's already dead. I don't care. <laughs> Not this dead enough. You'd start. What's that? <laughs> Not dead enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think that was a very special episode. I don't know about you I, guys. I feel special. Yes. Yeah. You are. You are. To My me, wife says I'm special. That's like that's like a mother saying that you're special. So I wouldn't trust it, honestly. Well, I think she uses it as an insult. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Sarcasm. She loves me. So the more she hurts me, the more I know she loves me. Right. That's how you know. <laughs> That's how you know. All right, guys. This has been yeah. awesome. Yeah, and uh it was a good episode. We should let's just do episodes like this every time. I know. Why can't it always be like this? <laughs> All right. I All right. Well, we love you guys. Keep, oh, uh, let me end it. Oh, you have something to say. I'm, I'm I'm help. I'm setting it up. I'm teeing oh. it up. I'm, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Fine, tee it up. Uh, I did, and now I feel like awkward. So. <laughs> I know I ruined it, and I'm sorry. Back to you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs>